it's a new year. I mean, it is a new year. Somehow. Maybe. Kinda. New, sort of. New year. New year, same shit. Same shit, different day. Yeah, screen. Except this time I'm in Bulgaria and you're not. Must fully. Yeah, it could be worse. Uh, hello. Hello, welcome to the Voices from Behind the Podcast. I'm the host. Uh, my name is Eva. And with me is the other Eva, who is also the host. Kinda, maybe. Probably. Who knows? It's more useful than a pocket on a shirt. Uh, this is a little quote from a movie we're going to talk about later on in the show. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> hell. What an amazing movie. If I am a bit quiet or if you hear me a bit weird, it's because I'm currently sat in a bed with a microphone strapped to my chest. So. Strappy daddy. I'm strappy, strappy, strappy good. I'm in, I'm in my old room and this is like the only way we could record. And I'm, I'll, we, I tried to stream it earlier, but for whatever reason, the internet is not up to speed. So this is just going to be recorded. And uh, we should be back to normal from uh, next week. First, though, we're going to go over what we did during the week, and then we're going to talk about some news. Hmm. Rest in peace, Neil Pert. God damn yeah. it. <laughs> Fucking brain cancer. Great start of the year. And then we're going to talk about Dead and Breakfast. One of the uh, names, one of those movies with a name that doesn't have much to do <laughs> with the... Uh, Uh, I, can't, I don't know how to fucking put it. Uh, we'll get to the movie. We'll get to the movie. Yeah. So, sir, good sir, how was how was your week? It was a slightly more eventful week than usual. Ooh, go on. That's since, since I was flying back home, back to England, back home, back to England. <laughs> flying back. <laughs> he goes home. Okay, I'm flying home now. Yeah, uh, like because my flight was from two o'clock almost, fifteen to two. Saturday in the afternoon. Yeah. yeah. It, was it was an okay flight. <clears throat> Time-wise. So, I, so my friend uh, drove me to the airport. I go there. And I'm, I'm ready to check out my baggage. And I see like Lufthansa. And no one's in front of Lufthansa. So I instinctively just fucking go for the biggest ass uh, queue in existence. Which was for why I'm there for some reason. Which was like, I was like, wait a second. This is no fucking Lufthansa. I'm this in the wrong right? queue. I was like, why the f- it was it was no one there. No one. Huh. Absolutely no two? one. Yeah, I was like, yeah. what, what, what the f- Did I miss my fucking flight? No, I can't have to make my flight. I'm there before fucking 11. I was like, 10 to, I was like, 20 to 11. I was at the airport. I was like, what? That can't be right. This, uh, no. So I leave my luggage. I was like, okay, it's, it's checked to Manchester. I was like, are you sure I haven't missed my flight? Because there's no one here. Nah, it's fine. You're the first one. I was like, what? What? So I sit there, do nothing, just you know, uh, spend my fucking time. Then I get, then I try to get on the fucking plane. And you know, nowadays Lufthansa has this uh, system where basically under everything that uh, you uh, under the ticket says group. Yeah. You know, group four, group three, group group two, and group group one. So usually it goes like this: group one and group two is usually reserved for people with children yeah families uh, and shit like that no not just families children mostly children young not children bobbies no just young young children just no young, younglings younglings yeah <laughs> um people that uh, have a part that have a gold card gold card I guess it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, frequent flag card uh, diplomats and uh, first class uh, citizens of, of the Lufthansa the and, one uh, percenters of Lufthansa yeah Honestly, I've flown forward to Lufthansa first, uh, first class. It's it's good. It's actually very good. And you well, know, uh, then you know, uh, what else? And that's about it. So group three and group four. Usually, group three are the people from the back, so they start going from the back to the front yeah. to feel the feel the right? So I know I'm I'm sitting on ten B. So I already know I am been going to be in group four. So I sit there and they start calling out people. You know how this shit goes now. <laughs> so, you, know, I, you saw the message I sent you over Facebook. <laughs> well, what do you mean, group three and group four? I'm going to be very careful on this flight now. And I was like, uh, they're, trying to, little... they're trying to trick me. Hmm. Well, 
That's not exactly the message I sent you. Let's go with that one because the one I sent you was oof. <laughs> Big oofs. Let me. I'll have a look at it now while you're talking about it. Mm -hmm. So people start queuing and they say, like, please. And obviously in two languages. Group three step front so we can uh, start boarding you, uh, you guys. Obviously people from group four start for, uh, going up and I'm sitting there just waiting. And they're like, in group four, please sit down. What do you mean I have to sit down? I'm oh, the there we go. Board. There's the message. What do you mean? Why are these groups one, two, and three? This is very, this is some shady shit. Why would I have, why do I have to wait? Oh, put yeah. brains on a flight. That's my fucking yeah. favorite thing and, in the world. Yeah. You know, you know, it's like, so I sit there and immediately I just say here, group four, there's like 50 people in front of me. I just push through, get forced to my fucking everybody. It's like, wait, what? I'm sitting there like, stupid bastards. The people fucking are to people, help with yeah. boarding the plane, you stupid fucks. Mm-hmm. I reached Munich, I got like 15 minutes till my next flight. Get, I'm gonna get there because it's fucking Munich, so I don't have to do anything. Yeah. Which always, always bug me. Why the fuck do I have to go for a second check in in Frankfurt and another in Munich? That shit always bug me. It makes no fucking sense. I don't know. You have to go through a double check, out, check uh, here as well. No. Because you check to get your passports checked on the way out at Terminal 2, and then you get your passports checked when you land. While when you're in the. Mm -hmm. UK, you never get your passport checked. You just get on the fucking plane. Actually, you do. See, in Bulgaria, you have you have free passport checks, but it's different. Yeah. Oh. Because uh, Bulgaria is also a lot of connecting flights that go to a uh, country that need visas. Oh, so, that makes sense. I mean, surprisingly, there's a lot of them because there was flights to Doha, to other stuff like that. Yeah, so yeah. you kind of need to check visas. But the way it works is like, so you give your passport at the check-in desk. You get your shit. Then you go in front of the escalator where there's a second passport check. Then you go there and get up. Then you get uh, the, because they also check your fucking ticket as well. Because, you know, that you are not uh, boarding for no reason. Then you uh, go up, you go through the check in, you address yourself, obviously. Uh, then you go through the actual passport check. At this point, I'm sitting there going, like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> then, you, then you start sitting down, and then when the flight comes, and the flight attendants fucking check your passport. I was like, what is this now? One, two, three, four, four times. Four times. What the fuck is this? Stupid. I know, it is, that's what's stupid. Even in fucking England, it kind of suffers the same issue. I have to show my passport like fucking three times, but it's still three, no fucking four. Yeah, still. but oh. Matt, the only reason why they do it here is because people in Bulgaria are somehow easily confused. Oh, uh, listen, I, I, was, I was out of it. This is the first time I've flown in ages, but I was completely out of it. I was yeah. so fucking... I don't know, man. It was like it was a weird day. I went to the... And my mind wasn't functioning. I, I, at this point, my, it was so bad, I wasn't even fucking sure which gate I was on. I was, Where am I sure. going? Yeah, it should be, I was like, it should be B10. Why isn't there a 10 in the fucking B? What the fuck's going on? No, they switched it to C. I was like, wait, but why is it in fucking C? It's always in whatever. Just, you know, doing some stupid shit. Yeah. And the one the flight from Munich to Manchester was uh, uneventful. Mostly. I mean, it was not, nothing really happened. Then I went back here, unpacked my shit, cleaned my room, stuff like that. I also played football earlier the week, in the week, okay. uh, which was something. Um, other than that, Actually, I haven't done that much. I mean, there was some... some... Oh, yeah. Back when I was... Guess what happened when I was back home? What? Uh, the police told me to do a man... uh, to do a check on my uh, ID. Seriously? Oh, this hasn't happened in fucking three years. Usually when I go, go back home, and this is uh, kind of the law, uh, poli uh, police on foot can stop you. Even on car, they can no, stop that, you. Yeah, right that, that's ask. perfectly normal, yeah. <clears throat> that's fine. But uh, here's the thing. Usually they stop me at least like three times when I'm back home. The past three years I haven't been stopped once. So me and my best friend were walking over uh, the bridge and then his favorite thing in the world, bridges. London bridges falling down. Just bridges. Just bridges. And um, two, because uh, because you look young policemen just fucking stop us. Just, you know, documents. I was like, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, he was like, but, oh, yeah, he was like and the usual uh, questions, uh, trouble with the law? No. You sure? Yeah. Positive, okay. Yeah. And that actually does matter because uh, if you have trouble with the law, uh, they can do a mandatory uh, search on you. Yeah. 
But here's here is the thing. Uh, depends on what kind of uh, trouble with the law you have. Because if it's, let's, let's say, DUI, uh, DUI, they probably won't check you. True. It's like, oh, yeah, I have a yeah, DUI. What the fuck? I mean, you know, for your own foot, you know, your car. But you say something else, like I was called with possession. Oh, they can fucking, they, they can uh, search your cavities as much as they want. Put if their they feel hand like it. up the butt. Oh, no. It's more like lean back, uh, uh, lean, spread, say, ah. Lick the fingers. They're going up the butt, checking that cavity, looking for fucking treasure. Uh, yeah. And if you don't have your ID on you, they can easily just uh, hold you to up to 72 hours until yeah, someone yeah. can confirm your identity. Which is weird, because I've never heard about this shit in uh, countries like America or Canada or others, even in the UK. Mm, uh, they, no, it does happen. It happens in the UK as well. If, if the police stop you in the middle of the night, they have the full right to ask you for ID. And if you don't have it, they can, like, take you in for the night. Oh, yeah, then I've at, least seen pretty, that at least I'm pretty sure it's a thing. Like, uh, last time I checked, it was. Oh, well, I've never seen this shit happen ever. It's like, I'm. Because back home, there's also. Um, they have to go. Because uh, it's uh, the numbers. They have to do a daily number thing. Yeah, they have to, like, turn in a certain amount of. Documents check. Take like a bunch 50. of boxes, I, yeah. I think it was 50. I'm not sure. But it's I easy want to do. So, there's like 3 million, 3 million people there anyway, so. Yeah, uh, and the funny thing is, is like I remember one time I got stopped for the uh, ID check three times in one day. But that was the most egregious because I was out uh, drinking and I was uh, trying to get the early 5 a.m. train. Yeah. To a tram, to a tram back home. And I was like, and I, I see it rounding up and I know the next one is like fucking 40 minutes. So I just start fucking running, 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 running. Mm -hmm. And these two policemen just look at me. One just stands in front of my way. And he's like, I'm fucking, I was like, I'm fucking shaking. Me. This is the third time you're checking my fucking uh, ID. Like, <laughs> can you That's imagine it's like the same, it's the same guys as well? <laughs> no, no, it wasn't. Like, oh, it's him again. Was, uh, Stop him. I know one of them was uh, at the uh, metro station. Uh, which one was it? And the, the, the one on the TSS. TSS. I don't know. I don't know metro station names and stuff. Yeah, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, I don't. I don't fucking remember. Uh, well, I don't know the fucking Glasgow ones you're talking about. The Sofia ones you give me. Uh, that was because on, on the big on the big boulevard, the big oh, one, okay. the original shopping center. Yes. I got, I got stopped there. Then I got stopped uh, when we were out, and then like a couple hours later, I got stopped again. And this one was the most egregious. I was like third time. That's my fucking show. I need to catch it because the next one's in fucking 40 minutes. And I don't want to wait this thing, even though it's early in the morning. I was like, uh, I'm really, really sorry. You know, it's it's mandatory for us to do it. I'm really sorry we chose you, but uh, we kind of have to do it. You, no trouble, no, no, no trouble, no, no. Yeah, give us a second. And he starts yelling at the woman that's uh, supposed to do the check. He's like, faster because the guy needs to catch his train. Faster, faster. And naturally, I fucking missed my train. And they're like, really sorry, we tried. But, you, you know, it's. Should have given you a ride. Well, they couldn't because you know the station there. Although it would have been nice. Hey guys, give me a ride then. <laughs> you made me miss my tram. I, I demand a ride. You know, they still say no because, like I said, they're posted there. Yeah. They, they can't. They, they shouldn't leave their post, even though they sh but they probably should have done that. And they can't leave it. Uh, what else? <laughs> Well, actually, I think that's about it. I'll probably remember something else. I won't keep a fucking diary at this point. What, what oh, I mean. oh, oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Today, get this shit. I had to go to the Apple store to get myself a new uh, piece, a new pair of headphones because I put my uh, gown uh, for the washer and I forgot to take out my old pair of fucking oh, uh, headphones. No. Listen, they still work. <laughs> but I wasn't risking it. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm, now, I'm most of these will go. work if they go through the wash. Like, I've mm -hmm. had earbuds that, that have been through the wash and they work fine. Yeah, no, but I was like, I can't risk it because it's, you know, it's today. So I was like, fuck it, I'm going to go and get them. I actually went out and bought a thingy. I bought a um, dongle so I can use my proper headphones with the phone. Oh, yeah, I got it. Oh, yeah. But, so I went to renew my driving license. Oh, oh, no. Did you have to do a mandatory medical checkup? Well, it was only an um, an eye one, so I. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, you have to go for more. It's just a basic eye test. So, like, I went to a private clinic because uh, I tried to go to the uh, you know the local. The GP. The GP. No, my GP is like at the other other end of town, and if it wasn't really worth it for me to go all the way there and come back. 
It should be for the GP at all because they made me go to the GP. Yeah, but I'm not. I'm not. My health insurance isn't in Bulgaria. Yeah, fair enough. So it wouldn't have worked exactly. Well, you don't have you have insurance in Bulgaria because I still have mine. No, I'm not. I'm insured in the UK. That was the problem. But anyway, I um I wanted to go to second city hospital, whatever you know, the big country ones. Mm-hmm. And I walk around the corner from it, and there was like ten people just outside, and I was like, "Nah, nah, fuck that." So I went to one of the private ones. One, I waited a total of ten minutes. The examination took five minutes, and all I did was pay twelve lefts for the whole thing to go through. Yeah. So, so then I went to uh, the police, and I'm like, "Hi, blah blah blah. You know, I, I want to renew my." Uh, driving license because it expires next month can you give me like the fastest you know order mm-hmm. was it like seven days ten days whatever it is it's it should be three days it's not it's uh 10 maximum it's it's uh bullshit. yeah yeah, yeah. Bull- the, bullshit back on uh, back is it's like three or four days yeah it depends like i uh it's either up to 10 days or up to 30 mine luckily so is eight days yeah i'm not i'm not even kidding i wish i was kidding fuck me but um so I went, and the girl behind the counter goes, yeah, you can't do fast ones with us. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, um, you can do a, you can do a slow one. I'm like, well, yeah, I can do a slow one. That's not a problem. I'll, can I just, you know, give my dad, go to like a, you know, a lawyer and get my dad to sign a thing so he can come pick it up because I'm not going to be here. She goes, no. I'm like, what? Right. You can fuck this shit. Yeah. She, she was like, if you want to, if you want to do that, you have to go to basically the DMV. The Bulgarian DMV. I'm like, are you actually serious? She goes, yeah, yeah. We, we don't do fast ones. I'm like, well, that uh, that was just a waste of my time. And luckily, my dad was just coming into town, so because the DMV is just out on the outskirts of town, you can't really walk to it. So we went there, and I'm like, hi, blah blah blah. You know, I need the quickest one you can give me. She was like, yeah, sure. Sign this. Sign this. Fill this in. They, they didn't even have to take my pictures because they still have all my biometric stuff from last year. Well, yeah, it's a fucking biometric thing. Rarely, yeah. just every like. I think it was three to four years they have to take them. Yeah, they have all my stuff from last year, so it, it's going to make my life easier. So it should be ready for the 15th in the morning. Just, just I fly in the evening, so that's a you know a good thing. Um, what else did I do? So yeah, that was a bit of a pain in my fucking ass. Um, I went to the dentist to get a, a crown checked, and I thought I was going to have to get it replaced, and the dentist lady just looked at it and went, I'm just going to buff that out. She buffed it out, and I'm like, oh. Was that it? Five minutes later, she goes, yeah, you can go home now. All right. Oh, that's yeah. good. I um, I finished The Witcher. The one? The Witcher. The, oh, the TV series? Yeah, yeah. I thought you were talking about the, the first game. No, I'm not even, I, I haven't played any games. I've just been lounging about the whole time. But I played The Witcher and uh, played, watched The Witcher. And that's a good show. A bit of a cliffhanger ending, though. But a really good, huh? really well put together show and see you should see what the critical drinker said about it critical drinker says a lot of things to be fair and they're all usually quite fucking right not always but um always finish that does. i watched a couple of films i um watched some bulgarian tv and i still feel like i need to wash my ass out with bleach uh what else did i do i saw some cats i touched the cats oh. I had doggos. Plenty of doggos. I, um... I'm gonna probably go see dogs in the next couple of days. I went out with Viara today. She says hi. Hi, Viara. Yeah, we uh, just spent some day... Spent the whole afternoon just in town just gossiping like fucking 50-year-old ladies. Um... But yeah, mostly I've just been like fucking lounging about and doing nothing because I thought screw it like I'm, I'm here for I'm, I've, done, I've done all my official shit I might as well just chill out for a bit uh, apart from that I yeah I've been having nice Bulgarian food and I'm, I'm trying to think if I've done anything of anything now oh there we go we're talking about flights I hate flying with Bulgarians so do I. Like, g- genuine hatred. What, if it's somebody that understands the whole etiquette and the whole steps to flying, they're usually super stuck up about it as if they're the only person that has ever flown in a plane. 
or they're just absolute brainless mo mongrels that just don't speak a lick of English. My favorite one was, uh, I was, because we, we uh, got tickets too late and we couldn't check in. So we got our seats assigned. We couldn't like pick our own seats for the you first know what all it is. For the first flight. No, I was, I was like one row from the very back. Ugh. So when the plane was landing, the back. the back is a pain because every little bump and every little mm -hmm. like raise and shit like that, you feel like all the way in your fucking like chest. I know. That's why I switched my place and went middle row in the, in the, in the front. Yeah, on, on the on the way on the way back now in a couple of days we're gonna be on. I think we're both on seat ten, next to each other. So that's sort of just in front of the middle, which is a pretty good spot because you, you barely feel turbulence. But yeah, I I hate turbulence because I don't like heights. So like fucking flying in that tin can with when it started landing near Sofia and there was a lot of wind. You literally feel weightless at points, and I, I was just fucking gripping my gripping those fucking wrists <laughs> like a fucking idiot. But like the usual pussy, 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 yeah. pussy. No so, jokes aside. <laughs> no, but you you completely get what I mean, don't you? It's yeah, like you're on a I fucking know. roller coaster. It's uh, except you're on a fucking plane. And it's terrifying. But so this idiot that was in front of me the whole time, I don't think this man understood that when the lights were on for the belts, he was supposed to have his belt on. So every time the light came on, he took the belt off and started walking around in the plane. So, Interesting. So the, uh, the, every time the stewardess comes up to him and goes, no, please, sit back down, put your fucking belt on, you fucking moron. And so the plane lands. Obviously, people clap because... <laughs> they the, the pay the man did a good job, play clap, everybody clap. Really? No, I haven't seen this in years. Oh, no, people fucking clap, especially when you're when it's like 70% Bulgarians on the flight. They all fucking clapped, and it was mm. abysmal. Wait, wait, wait. I haven't seen this in years. It's bad. I mean, then again, you fly with fucking direct flights, which is a yeah. travesty. Yeah, I just find it. I'd much rather do direct just because it makes my life easier. But... And we kind of bought these last minute as well, which came out cheaper. Anyway... So the plane lands, you know, when it first lands and it's still going bumpy bump and it's like taking turns around the airport and, you know, skidding around the tarmac and shit like that. Mm -hmm. I feel like five seconds after the front wheels touched the same cuck that was in front of me doing the shit, mm -hmm. undid his belt and stood up to take his, to take his luggage. Oh, I know these guys. And I'm talking like we're all still rumbling and everybody's like looking around. Are we, are we fully on, you know, is the plane fully light? No, this guy got up. And he started walking towards the exit. See, so, the so plane, like, the attendants the had to, again, that... literally wrestle him down to sit the fuck down because he's a fucking idiot. Sorry, go on. You see, the funny thing is, usually when the wedding lands down, I just don't do my belt because I'm tired. Like, I, I was half asleep when I saw that, but I started, I pissed myself laughing. And the guy next to me looked at me like I was some sort of alien. I'm like, what are you looking at? This is hilarious. Never let people like that on a plane. I don't give a fuck. Like, learn basics. Clearly, you've either come to visit your son or you've gone to the UK to get make some money. And, like, fucking just get your shit together and get on the, you know, when the lights are on for the belts, don't undo your belt and walk around. It's for your own fucking safety. Is it, though? Is it? No, you, you, you just don't care. It's like, you can even undo your belt. That's really not a problem. Yeah, you can, but also, don't be a fucking. It's it's very hard with Bulgarians because it's most people are so up their own asses they don't bother understanding what's going on in the plane. See, the funny thing is, even when I fly with other people, because usually I take uh, uh, connecting flights because it's the best way. Because yeah. you have to suffer three and a half hours with these fucking mong mongoloids. <laughs> True. But me, I have to suffer just an hour and thirty, and that's usually more than I want to. The, the other one thirty, I'm usually with uh, British people, yeah, or, yeah. people just people, people, people do, doing non Bulgarian, non, yeah. non Bulgarians, and it's that that's usually fine. I mean, you still have your fucking idiots everywhere, but True. it's it's never that bad as it gets here. No, like um, I heard and some of the funny shit. Oh, well, obviously, I I know what you mean. Of especially those uh, newly uh, uh, newly born retards that go out for the first time outside of Bulgaria. Uh, those those are my favorite. Those are my absolute fucking favorite. They just, you know, 
they think that the whole world owes them something yeah. because of that. Sadly, that's not getting impaired. Sadly, that's not how it works. Not at all. Pretty and, much, uh, yeah. and they act as if though. Uh, <coughs> how should I put it? Mm. They act as if they own the place. As if they understand yeah, yeah, everything. Let, yeah, let's go with that one. And, and that's kind of how the, the world works. And especially it's not that way that someone tries to, to, to talk shit to me. Especially to me for some reason. And I'm like... <laughs> Did I tell you the story about the guy who claimed he's flown many flights and he couldn't even like oh, oh, do that, his yeah, belt? I know. Yeah, I know. You've told me. You've said it before. <laughs> when there's clear instructions as the plane takes off from the attendants to show you how... It must be one of those Chinese-based things, I guess. I don't fucking know. No one knows that's the whole point. I mean, it's fucking weird. People, uh, uh, people doing this is just fucking weird. Because uh, no matter how many times I fly, and I fly like fucking eight times a year at this point, it's just uh, you can always tell the idiots from the normal oh, people. Oh yeah, straight away. Even, you can tell straight away. Because uh, even people that fly for the first time can know know how to act normally yeah don't do too much shit but yeah i mean i especially hate it when there is a issue with the what's the word for it what the fuck was the word for it because i forgot oh with the luggage when (laughs) when the flight is overbooked yeah and they have to take some of the they have to take it like in the in the hole and shit like that yeah no this time there was so so much luggage that i had to we had to wait for them to load it with the rest of the luggage because there was no uh, space in the hold anymore. Yeah. Well, Ryan was that one. Ryan and I have done a thing now where uh, you you have to pay extra to actually put the luggage up above your head because they've they've been running out of space because people try to sneak shit in all the time. Well, this is fucking Ryan. Ryan they're yeah, yeah make true. For, they'll make I you mean, pay for the fucking seat belt if they if they can. But well, they try they they tried to make it so that you have to pay for the fucking toilet. Did they? Oh yeah, they tried. Fucking hell. Which is fu- that's why I don't fucking fly with Ryanair at all because they fucking despise these cheap bastards. Anyway, yeah, so they did the thing, and in typical Bulgarian fashion, they got you know people people were not informed of this even though it's clearly written out, and we've lined up and we got let on by the way. I don't even know how because our bags were both kind of big, but anyway, you can still you can still fit it under the seat, no problem. But <laughs> like there were people just stood there on the side with a Bulgarian shirtist talking to them in Bulgarian saying you can't do this and that and they still pretended like they did not understand what was going on and the, the, at least four people were left behind because they were too stupid to like either get their shit taken in for free or pay the extra money to take it on with them and they were just stood there in typical Bulgarian like I don't want to give money fashion like you know you know like hands on your hips like Mm-mm-mm. what you think you're doing I know what I'm doing you can't tell oh, me this is not just Bulgarian this is everywhere but then True. again Ryanair are fucking notoriously stupid yep. and they That's never inform true. shit they never inform shit yeah I have Ever. a feeling like they're gonna try and pull this on us on the way on the way back but regardless it's like just That's fucking... why you never fucking fly with Ryanair That's one on one almost as, as much as from flying back with EasyJet <laughs> Do you know how bad it got? Vesco flew with fucking Lufthansa and was happy he was like oh my god this is actually good I don't have the fucking typical easy jet bullshit here. I was like, yeah, no shit. This is why I fucking do connecting flights with Lufthansa. I don't want to fucking fly with these retards. I don't want to fucking see them anywhere near me. Just <laughs> kill them. Just fucking destroy them. So I'll pay the extra. I don't give a shit. It's just, it's ridiculous. Bro. It's literally right there. Even fucking miss there. Sorry, with there. <laughs> I'm guilty of the same fucking shit. I've flown with Wizz Yeah, all the, all the like budget tariff people, they're kind of like that. Even Bulgarian is better than this. True. Anyway. And, and, uh, which is not kind of true, but still, it's still fucking better. True. Uh, anyway, the, like, yeah, that's just... Flights are a stupid thing. Never a fun thing. Especially with Bulgarians who are completely and utterly clueless, but they pretend to be modern Europeans. I, I like well, to call them city boy. I just say, uh, Gratsky. Like, come on, city boy, move on, move along, come on. And they look at me like I'm like I'm you know like I've insulted their mother. I'm like, move on, come on. Yeah, I I usually just glare at them and they get the point. My favorite and one it's... was on the <laughs> we, oh, we... Oh, Go on. my favorite my favorite one is usually they have to look at my passport to know if I'm a Bulgarian or not. <laughs> well, for the, all these reasons, I don't favorite I don't one is Desi and I landed. You know where we're yeah. we've lined up 
you know, on Terminal Two, you get off, you get on the bus, they yeah. take you to the to the thing, and you've lined up to get your passport checked. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I looked at her and I went, "How long before somebody moans that there isn't enough uh, check, you know, enough stalls open yeah. for people to go through?" And, and that's seconds like a... after I said that, this guy goes, "I'm going to hurry up ahead. This isn't enough people." Uh. <laughs> and he, and he like crossed. His daughter was like super embarrassed, but he managed to like, and he had one, you know, the typical Bulgarian with a bag that like has three zippers on the bottom that makes it extend. I know. One of those lotto bags. That's what he had. And I'm like, yeah, there he goes. And he like, he crossed the queue. He, he went in front of like, went ahead of four people just to like get ahead quicker, even though at the end of the day, we're all going at the same pace and it won't make a fucking difference. And it was like, yeah. it wasn't even late. It was like half eight you know, in the evening, like nobody, nobody was in a hurry. Like the Metro runs till 11. Like, why would you fucking hurry so much? But yeah, come on, people are waiting for me. Like everybody else has people waiting for him. Like, don't, don't be a fucking dick. But yeah. And by the time I said that, and then somebody else complained, like, Oh, why do we have to wait? <laughs> cause it's just, cause three flights got dumped on these poor people. What do you expect? With the, the, I've never seen that happen. Yeah. But usually no, it's Bulgarians always stuff. moaning about some dumb shit anyway. But yeah, flying with Bulgarians is stupid, and I hope they never fly again. I hope they go in the coach, because they find it cheaper, and then I hope they bitch about the coach as well. Oh, well. So, let me get the transition going. So, news. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 we forgot the, my favorite type of people, the ones that uh, wait for the luggage. I fucking love those every time, man. Every time. The ones that shove you out the way to get to their luggage and then realize it's not their luggage. Uh, no, no, no. They mess up the. Listen, the, sho- the shoving part happens because the fucking retards don't abide by, by the line. The line's there for a reason. Yep. It's there for a fucking reason. You don't. Or the ones it. that touch every single suitcase because they think it's theirs. No, to be fair, I don't. I haven't seen this, and since I flew for the first time, although oh, I, we, I, we, I, we I saw it last been... year, not last year, year before. Yeah. Uh, to be Oops. honest, I've been guilty of the uh, guilty of the same thing because of two reasons. First of all, it was my second flight, and it was back home. Yeah. And, uh, and there was like three luggages, which I swear to God were almost identical to mine, because the way they put it, I don't see the the emblem is like the company that made my luggage. I don't see it. Yeah. yeah. So I, if I, I don't see it, I have to fucking touch it, look at it, and like but then again, I realize I'm touching other people's luggage. And it's fucking stupid. So I have to wait to see which one of these makes it around twice so I can take it I'm, yeah, like, I'm, I'm lucky enough that I got a suitcase that very few people have and it's very unique looking so it's easy to spot yeah. plus like people don't even bother reading the tags though there's a people when you get your bag oh, checked there's always oh, a little tag fucking, oh no I don't have a fucking tag uh, usually my tag says but my fucking end uh, sorry my current tag says Manchester München which you know since I'm flying with people from fucking München it's not, particular, it's not particularly it's not particularly smart. Are you Oh fucking yeah. hell. Uh, you know what you know that's how it's in fucking German. So yeah, did you see the trailer for New Mutants? No, I haven't. It still looks like it did when the first trailer came out, but it's finally coming out. I don't know. Yay so, question marks. Uh, um what is it? Ah uh, yeah. There is uh, Avatar 2 concept art revealed. The what? Avatar 2 concept art. I don't give a shit. <laughs> there is also uh, Perry Reginald making a new movie called The Ascent. Yep. Speaking of uh, things I don't give a shit about, everybody's cracking on about Ricky Gervais's speech at the Golden Globes oh, or whatever. Oh, what a fucking legend. What a legend. What a absolute fucking he's legend. He's done the same shtick every time he's hosted the stuff. It's been five years. No, no, because he fucking grilled him about fucking Epstein. That's what uh, was the controversial part. Because he fucking told those fucking poets there that they fucked up. In not so many words. Remember. <laughs> Epstein, Epstein killed himself under a maximum security and we have no footage at all. By the way, they lost the original camera footage that was uh, before the whole thing happened. Yet, when they killed the Iranian general, we had fucking photos. 15 minutes later. Across the fucking world. Somehow we have followed that. But you have yet to find any evidence about Epstein's uh, death. That's yeah. fucking... That's not suspicious. That's, that's a fucking telltale sign. 
Tell me about it. Like, it's it's that bad. And Ricky Gervais I literally just fucking told him, you fucking perverted pedophilic pieces of shit. You fucked up. You fucked up badly. Yeah. Speaking of things fucking up, uh, Scott, is it Scott Derrickson, is it? Uh, the guy that direct yeah Scott Derrickson the guy that directed the first Doctor Strange don't care I haven't seen it has has moved away due to creative differences from the second Doctor Strange he's no longer going to be uh, directing it also we got another trailer for Birds of Prey oh I saw that one that was fucking garbage how did you stop it on 10 seconds Black Mask is wearing a black mask at least that's that was right also, the rest of it just looks generic, and if I feel like I don't, I'm not excited for this at all. No, no one's fucking excited for this. It literally feels like they've taken Gotham City Sirens and Birds of Prey, and they've mixed the two together, but they've lost the identity of both along the way. Maybe. I still don't know how to feel about it. I will probably not watch it because it's a piece of shit. <laughs> Because no matter how good Margot Robbie looks like fucking Harley Quinn, she's a Harley Quinn as my fucking uh, Hulk. Let's go with Hulk. Bruce, kind of. Yeah. Hulk, not uh, just whatever. Bruce Caliph, yeah. Mm-hmm. The... Ben it's just... Uh, yeah, just, I don't know. I don't, still don't know how to feel about it. Like, oh, man, ever since the don't... first trailer, I was a bit Huh? Listen, at least we know what people are going to dress up for next year Halloween. More Harley Quinn. Mm-hmm. This Black year Canary it was Joker. In a weird 70s suit with a fucking nose piercing, because that's what an experienced fighter would have. A nose piercing. A septum piercing, yes. That's what experienced, experienced martial artists have in their, in their fucking noses. Piercings. Because you know, you can't just tear those apart away easily. Yep. Regardless of their size, you can literally just grab them by the septum, and you can tear the septum out without even the piercing. But anyway, uh, there's a trailer for Lock and Key. Yeah, I saw that. I haven't checked it out. The Netflix series. It doesn't look terrible, but also I don't know much about Lock and Key to begin with. I don't care to be honest. It's a fucking Netflix show. Who gives a shit at this point? One of the worst lines I've ever heard, though, which was, "The key house." Has many keys. Or was it the House of Keys has many keys? I was like, I heard literally heard that and I went. Oh no. Oh, 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 oh no. yes. Looks oh, like a nice cast. Like it looks like there's a lot of people, you know, cool people involved with it. But I still really don't know how to feel about it. Like me, I don't care. Yep. Yeah, but also yeah, Neil Neil Pert is dead. Taken by brain cancer, way too, way too early. Nah, he had a long fucking career. That's good. He's born in '52, though. He was. He didn't die very old. He lived like what, 60, 60 old, sixty-eight years now. That's not that bad. Come on. So Neil Pert passed away Six- at the age of. I cannot do math today to save my life. They should have a fucking... At the age uh, of 68. Yeah, that's not that bad. Come on. Nah, that's bad. It is 68, man. It's pretty good, man. 68 years on this world. Sorry. No, 60, 70 best all I know, man. Well, yeah, I don't know when he's both as old as that, probably 67. Active for a while, though. One of the best drummers ever. Like genuinely one of the most influential like rock and progressive drummers to exist. Yeah, remember we discussed fucking uh, the top hundred guitarists and we should never go there. Listen, it got so bad that people are like, oh, "What's the problem with John, John Lennon being forty? I was like, "Listen," and I just put uh, put the fucking songs. These people are not there. Fucking John Lennon on the fucking on the fucking kuharka. Is that what? what, what, what John what the Lennon fuck? and the Kuharka as uh, the, the Kuharka uh, for the it is the uh, is the acoustic uh, guitar. Yeah, is there, there for there doing is, between? There nothing? is another list that recently got released that is also just as bad, maybe is even it, worse. 
still missing this so I can fucking rage. No, no, it's uh, Billboard's uh, decade end charts. They obviously they release charts to end the decade, mm-hmm. and this is the hot rock songs of the twenty tens. Uh, oh no, fuck that shit. Rock's dead. Rock's pretty much dead. So do you want to you want to hear the top no, three songs? No. No, I don't, because it's fucking rock in the 2010s. No, no, Ooh. rock. It's it's. They no. Label these... no, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. I don't care. It's fucking rock in 2010s. It's rock not rock. Dead. They've labeled it it's as rock. Dead. But it's dead. It's absolutely dead. There's nothing saving it. It's about fucking popularity. All three top songs. Just, I don't care. Or by Imagine Dragons. I, I don't care. Imagine the Dragons are a shit band. They're not a rock Congratulations. band. Congratulations. I don't fucking care. They're the fuck. They're the modern version of fucking Nickelback. You've got twenty-one pilots are on the list. I don't fucking care. I they're, don't care. They're not rock bands. Nothing is rock. Nothing. It's they are dead. literally maybe. Wait, let me let me have a look. Lord is on a fucking with Royals. Is that rock? See, Foo Fighters are on there. See, there. That's one they're, rock band. They're not fucking rock. They're a piece of shit as well. I'm sorry, if I wanted someone to fucking cry on the fucking microphone for 15 fucking minutes, I'd listen to fucking Jim Borgia. Rise At Against least I'm gonna there. Enjoy. Stone Sour there. Oh, God, Stone Sour. <laughs> no, we're talking about actual rock bands, not fucking 21 Pilots. And Imagine Dragons, who have like six entries on the list. Stone uh, Stone Sour is also a rock band as much as the fucking Linkin Park is a rock band. People, now you're going to tell me that Linkin Park is... no clue what rock music is, but... <laughs> I'm better than neither of you because you're literally saying the same shit as them. Rock's dead. Rock has been dead for fucking decades now. There is no more rock. It's dead. Rock is dead. Long at this point, rock, rock. At this point, rock, rock exists as a fucking term for popular uh, songs that don't go into the pop category. <laughs> Not because they're, they're actually for, uh, fucking rock. That's a good point. But I told Desi about the list with the guitarists. And I showed her the top 10, and she was like, I don't know some of these people. Why are they here? I'm like, Wow. See, uh, I know most of them except fucking Dwayne Allman, who I had uh, one of my friends. He's also uh, he knows a lot about this. And he was like, "Oh, I don't really recognize this name. Oh, Dwayne Allman from the Allman Brothers." Now that rings a bell. He told me I was like Midnight Rider was the, the name of the song. I can't remember. You can check it out later. He was like, "I know this song. It's pretty good." I was like, "But," and I was like, "But you have Tommy Iommi on twenty-five and fucking Santana on." 20. Tony Iommi was on fifty. Oh. Even worse, I was like, and I'm pretty Santana sure, yeah, t- Ayomi was in the smack dab in the middle of it, and fucking and 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 this moron that has that is literally famous because he played Layla with the top ten in the fucking film ball. That's exactly how much I, 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 I think that he uh, did. Gilmore Regardless wasn't even what... in the top ten. Oh well, no, I showed them the list. They were like, uh, see, at least they have Billy King and yeah, the, they the, had all the blues players and shit like that. But like, where is uh? There's a jazz guy who's incredible and is still performs, but I forget his name. He should have been on the list, and he wasn't. It was like fifty people that should have been on the list. And they, fucking, they put Alex Lifeson at the very end, so they can fuck off. They put Jack White in front of him, Jack fucking White, and they put Johnny Ramone near the top of the list. See, I want to point out. I showed you. I literally played some of the people who made songs, revolutionary songs that shaped up the fucking decade in music. They weren't on those lists. Yep. And as I said before, none of the modern metal players were on the list or the shredders. Because regardless how you look at it, John Lennon is not a competent guitar player. He's not. He's not a competent musician to begin with. None of the Beatles are competent musicians. They were the first oh. boy band for fuck's sake. Uh, because they got they popular fuck- because they put butts in seats and because they got people's panties wet. No, it, it, it's because they were the first ones who got, got a visa to the USA. Remember, the, the Kings were supposed to be that, that group, but yeah. they never got visa. It's the USA Beatles that made the Beatles popular. Still okay. it, it, there is no problem with people liking Beatles, but pretending that they're actually good drama, uh, sorry, good musicians, that's a completely different. That's Com- Clearly, yeah, people clearly have no fucking clue if they think that. Because you can, because you can have a lot of fucking taste in music, and you can like a lot of different things, but you should never fucking uh, look at it as the point as the, the best thing ever. Yep. Because I don't think fucking think that Merciful Fate is the best thing ever, but I fucking respect the hell, the living shit out of the fucking guitarist that made Melissa. There's too many like, people again. They should have been on that list, but weren't. Let's for, let's skip that because I'll get pissed off. 
Have you got any other news, sir? Uh, wait, wait, there, there was one about the gaming news. And so, something happened, I can't remember because I'm currently smoking cigarettes. Let me have a look. It, maybe it was something done with Bethesda, I think it was. Probably something with Bethesda. Let's, I've just literally, let's go to, let's see what Give a GameSpot has to say. Oh, why? Because it's just trash. the latest gaming. There was also controversy again with the more diverse thing gaming. And guess what? Guess which fucking morons popped out of the woodwork? Which ones? The usual suspects. Oh. Diversity. Uh... Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Platinum Games is uh, getting money from Tencent now. Oh no. Don't ruin one of my favorite developers, please. It's done. God damn uh, response it, no. CEO, response CEO is taking over DICE LA. <laughs> also, Chinese is now Steam's most popular language, according to its hardware survey. Nah, just wait for fucking Gavin to say something against the Chinese, and then it's gonna be done. <laughs> Ban oh, 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 oh. And get this. There was a, a harassing copyright bug in the WWE 20, uh, 2020 game. That, what, are, you uh, me that, are you telling me a WWE game has bugs? No, no, I don't believe that for a second. Get this shit out. After, after New Year's, the game literally stopped working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my microphone's gonna fall. Okay. Oh, what a shocker. Listen, I, I've seen a lot of shit. I can remember uh, fucking uh, Fallout 76 that used to uh, uninstall itself on the PC. But oh, come on. And the thing is, it's like... It stopped working, and regardless how much time to try to uh, re uh, reinstall it, it didn't work. Also, online World War II shooter Days of War leaves early access at the end of the month. Don't know it. Probably don't. It's care like about an old it. school. It's 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 an old school FPS looking thing. It do, it's, it doesn't look terrible to be fair, and they're aiming for like a higher skill ceiling, and it only costs twenty pounds. Uh, probably one player. It's like it's thirty-two player play. maps. And you lost me. I don't fucking enjoy those um, yeah, battle royale matches. Mind. No, it's not battle royale. It's just, just, it's just like typical TDM shit. Still, it's a fucking battle royale because cause the thing about a battle royale is nothing more than a TD or a DM. No, map. battle royale is a free for all. Yeah, it's either a DM or a TDM because you can team up and have teams and yeah, squads. And actually, shit. that's a good point. It depends on that. It's this literally fucking. This doesn't look terrible. I'm, I'm looking at the trailer now and it. It just looks like people who really like Call of Duty 2 and just made a game out of it. Or made probably a better game out of it. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing some... Yep, it literally just looks like Call of Duty 2. And it looks good. It's probably... Is it an Unreal Engine? It looks like it's an Unreal Engine. Just by the uh -huh. looks of those shadows, but... Part and, of you're probably, and you're probably wrong. Yeah, I want to be fast, That's man. Because <laughs> uh, let me remind you of that fucking joke you forever... It's not fucking Unreal 3, it's Unreal 1. And that's why it fucking reminded me so much of Havoc. Yeah, it, it does have like the jank of Havoc here and there. I have feeling like the only games that actually... Yeah, it isn't real. I was right. I have a feeling that ha like the only games to sort of utilize Havoc in a way, or in the best way I should say, are probably either the Souls games or uh, Metal Gear Rising. Both of those series or not series no rising no looks way. is pushes havoc to like absolute limits no actually the what was it project snowblind i think it was the game i will go you know the, the game that uh, we used to talk about control that uh took so just fucking copied it oh yeah, yeah snowblind the crystal dynamics one yeah i was on fucking havoc that looked yeah. fucking amazing and the physics actually made sense is it on havoc I think so. I think it was Havoc. One of them. Maybe not this one, but it's another one that was Project like that. Project Snowblind, Platforms, Composer, Genre, Modes. Oh, show me the fucking engine, for God's sake. Publisher IDOS. Blah, 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 blah. Control F. Engine. No matches. Fuck me. <laughs> That's rare. That should happen. Engine. Let me see what engine is this. The Snowblind engine, also referred to as the Dark Alliance game engine. Is a game engine created by Snowblind Studios for perspective correct over her third-person view role-playing games. 
Huh. It's actually their own in-house engine. Isn't it just a heavily modified version, much like Volvo used a heavily modified version of the of Quake. Uh, Quake engine, of Quake to make the um, Half-Life 1? No, it's their, own, it? it's their own fucking thing. Give me a second. What, wasn't it another one? It's not Snowblind. Also, Project Snowblind was apparently, I'm reading the wiki now, uh, began development in 2004. No, 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 no. The, the, the game is not Snowblind. It's not Project Snowblind. Right. And then, first person shooter and originally planned as part of the Deus Ex series. No, 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 no. This one was a third person shooter. We made this mistake last time, didn't we? Yeah, it wasn't Snowblind. It was a different one. Yeah, the same one. I know, I know. It's not Crystal it's Dynamics. Just... It's uh, the other guys. Um, fuck, what's the name of the studio? Remedy. Actually, it was the Remedy. remedy well, it's or... Remedy. They're the same guy. Control Island, like Max Payne, Death Rally, Max Payne 2, Crossfire. <laughs> Crossfire. It's a Source game. Listen, I'll, I'll check it out because I remember it was... A... What the fuck was it? Let me just Google this fast. Five hundred five games, is it? I can't remember. I honestly can't remember. It was a third person shooter no, with five hundred five were just publishers. Psychic powers mid two thousand. God no, mid two thousand. This is exactly psyops the mind game conspiracy. I think this was it. Yeah, it was PsyOps, the mind, mind gate, because the, the mind gate uh, conspiracy by Midway. That's the game. Is that an ethic? Yeah, I as, as far as I, I, as far as I remember, the logo said oh, fucking havoc, so might as well fucking be at some point. Uh, let's have it here. Let's have a wiki. Lost Midway. Wait. Uh. Oh, it's being developed. For fuck's sake, I, can I just, why does the wiki not have the engine listed? Oh, wait, wait, a traditional shooter in many uh, respects by Oxyrox Banks on Saragdol Physics by way of Havoc 2.0 and variety of psychic powers. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, or do they use Havoc just for the just for the physics, though? <laughs> it doesn't say anything. Um, <sighs> there is nothing on it, so I presume it's mostly Havoc? I... Havoc's a good just... engine. It's not really good, it's mediocre. Yeah, but it still uh, does the job. It's, up. Uh, it, it's been outclassed by modern day physics by fucking ages. Oh, yeah. Like, it's really fucking uh, stupid right now. Oh, and here's a funny thing that I forgot to tell you. You know, on the 6th of January, I think it was, was it the 7th? My, my fucking memory. No, you, the day Christopher was born. Yeah. Just double check. I posted about. Uh, uh, 6th of January. I was there the first time. Uh, January 6th, 1848, yeah. Yeah, and I posted a photo of him in the Discord, in the Smite Discord. I was like, yeah, celebrate my morning with me. And then fucking, fucking, listen, then fucking Fraser said probably mo the most spot on stupid thing he could have said in the, the exact world. I just, he was so spot on, and it, 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 it was so stupid, it made the loss. And he was like, huh, nice picture of 19th century Hugh Jackman. Think about it. Just, that hurts my brain a little, but he's got a point. Exactly. I was like, what, what? he has a point, but... It does what, look a little bit like Hugh Jackman. It, he does. I've never actually thought about it. I was like, Give him some fucking like, claws and he can... He can make it work? He used to bought it for Wolverine. I, I, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, this is the stupidest, most offensive thing, but it's... Kind of it true. makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. It, makes sense. it does look like, a, like Hugh Jackman a little bit, yeah. Hello, I don't know, I don't... I'm Mr. Botev. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I actually had a genuine fucking love on that one. I know he wasn't trying to be uh, mean or anything, but, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. It, it, it's just, uh, no, it was funny, though. I'll give him credit for that one. That was funny. <laughs> okay, GameSpot news. Doctor Strange loses director. Yeah, that's game news, all right? Perfectly. Oh, a new Batman game teased again from WB Montreal. Let me just go check again the. Okay. Matt Kelly. Oh, yeah, the history of the Kelly gang. Yeah, they said that they're gonna make a movie about Matt Kelly. Huh. 
Speaking of movies, Irishman's getting good reviews. Except people are saying it's a bit long. Oh shit, it's a long... It's a fucking Scorsese movie. <laughs> Obviously, but uh, I have a feeling that people are so used to having two-hour films now, they, they can't handle something that's longer. You can't handle me. Can't handle if you can't handle me at my Scorsese, you don't deserve me at my Scorsese. Ah, oh, Christ. Oh yeah, about the uh, the ascent by Perry Reginald. Yes. He, here is the weird part. He still has to have a U.S. distribution, and it's probably gonna be a long time since we actually see the movie. The Ascent, what was that again? Uh, this is an exorcism movie. It looked like one. It's a religious horror movie. What year did it come out? Last year, maybe? No, it, they, they debuted on Horror Festivals 2019. It's supposed to come out this year. It's picked up for the, the, the distributions in a few markets. One of them is Canada. But... Uh, there is no U.S. distributor yet, so it might be. It's good. Oh yeah, there we go. Coming. Official trailer possession horror film. So many film, films with that name, it's ridiculous. There's a Russian one from like 1977 as well. Well, it said 2020. It says 2020, so I presume it's going to come out in 2020. 2020. Veteran LAPD detective faces off against his toughest murder suspect yet. No. This is something else. This is a 2017 one. 2020. Just no, I'm like saying there's the, a there's I a 2017 S, one. Double S. Oh. Uh huh. Not S C S S. The ascent. Yeah, the ass end. The ass end. Okay, that's a cool looking poster. Yeah, it doesn't look how, the most. Single father like suspect that his young son may be possessed. Simple. P- possess me, daddy. Possess me, Papa. That's, that's a pretty cool looking poster to be fair actually the most looks also pretty good the one with the inverted cross and shit like that um, let me try and throw it up on the screen save image yes thank you thank you for letting me save your image your, you? your image your image lad thank, thanks for saving your image in the very middle of the screen to scare people what Yep, it's on the screen now. If if you're watching the video version of this, have a look if, if you want to get petrified, because that's a pretty good poster. Actually, I prefer the monster inside the, the I'm visual. I'm going to make a bunch of noise by deleting this. There we go. Speaking of a bunch of noise, you gave me a film last week. Yeah? I did. It's a fucking amazing movie. A film that left me confused, but... Okay, before we start, let me explain the movie how you're supposed, how I thought it was supposed to be uh, looking as. This movie legitimately looks like a. Give me a minute, uh, find out. Like a country song, a two uh, an hour and a half country song. Yes, and it's fucking amazing. It is very into itself. It's very uh, open about the fact that it knows it's a movie. But the only person that knows it's a movie is the countryman who sings the songs as little interludes between scenes. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what this man was. Was he aware that he's in a film? Was he aware that he's narrating the film? Because he was even narrating and when he was possessed as well. Because this is also a possession story. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he was aware. How the fuck wouldn't he be aware? Eh, That's a good point. But So it's a film about this uh, group of three couples... Well, not one of them isn't exactly a couple. They're trying to be a couple, but it's three couples and they're um, on a road trip to get in this RV to get to uh, the driver's cousin's wedding. The driver's a weirdo, by the way, established early on, but so they're on the way to this wedding and was it they run out of, are they just lost and they run out of fuel? No, they they need a place to stay for the night. Oh yeah, so they go to this B and B in the middle of nowhere in this little town, and they get directed there by the. Uh, <laughs> they go to this um, to a fuel station, or the gas station, and there's a little band playing at the front, and 
gas attendant is the, the, the narrator of the film. And he plays the guitar and he does a little sing song with the rest of the band who mysteriously between shots swap between a bass and a guitar to a weird bass and a banjo. I don't know how they do that, but they do it somehow. Uh, so then he directs them to the B&B and he says, you must be mighty careful around these parts. There's some weird goings on around these parts. I'm not being offensive. That That is literally how he talks. And so they go to the uh, B&B and that's where we meet David Carradine called also known as Mr. Wise and Mr. Mr. Best Guy Ever. Mr. Best Guy Ever and his is a French <laughs> is a French servant person who works at the hotel who just calls everybody a piece of shit and he, he makes fun of you know uh, tells our characters off for being shitheads and just he, he's just being a gen he's just clearly the person taking care of the place so he's gonna he's, he's gonna be uh very, he's, he's the, he's the key, not the gatekeeper, but he's the, the innkeeper, so to speak. See, the funny thing is, it's like I always view David Carradine as a hammier version of Vincent Price. I don't think he be he can be hammier than Vincent Price, to be fair. Okay, motherfucker, have you seen this guy? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Like, he can be really fucking hammy, but he always has this class the same as him. Yeah, he has this aura about him that just steals every scene he's in, even though he was, yeah. even if he's just in the background doing nothing, he still steals See, the scene. For people who who people who don't who don't know who uh, David Carradine is, he's, he's basically Bill, Bill from yeah. Kill Bill. Yes, and I think that uh, his debut was uh, when back when uh, Bruce Lee passed away a, on time. Yeah, right? he was in a he was in a bunch of kung fu movies. I was thinking that he was the guy that substituted him in some of the American ones. But don't quote me now. I, I think for, he was in a I bunch forgot. of Bruce Lee films. I'm not sure. I know that I well, know that Chuck Norris had his debut in a Bruce Lee film. No, I think that after he passed away, they used him as a. Isn't he a bit tall? No, no, they used him just uh, someone to take his place. Oh, uh, okay. Because you know, he died. <laughs> yeah. So, they go over there, and obviously, there's uh, weird goings on in this place. They can't. They, kind of hard to explain there's noises going on and we get introduced to our characters whose names i've already forgotten because they're just a bunch of funny teens haha they make funny jokes and then in the middle of the night the really drunk one he goes to half some blueberry pie <laughs> that just finds in the fridge and they all, everybody goes to like you know but bear, bearing in mind that at this point the weirdo is missing we don't know where he's gone so, at the exact same time, David Carradine has a heart attack while well, one of the girls is with him in the room. And then we go and find the guy, the, the smart mouth of the group, I think his name was David, having the blueberry pie. And we switch the light on and there's the Frenchman. He's been impaled on the wall. He's been brutally murdered. Uh, yeah, you forgot to mention that the funny guy who plays the funny guy. The funny yeah. guy's amazing. Yeah, he's, he's probably the best part of the whole film. But... Uh, he's a very famous actor nowadays. Let me, look. Let me Google this real quick. So, there's been a lot. There's a lot of B movie stars in this, but there's a lot of A listers as well. So, yeah, I mean, uh, the blonde was played by David Carradine's daughter. I think. Yes, she is smoking as well. So, it's a zomb- It's not a zombie film, but. It's a 2004 <laughs> musical zombie comedy film. Yeah, it kind of, kind of puts it like that. But Let's no, see, they're not zombies. They specify mo- a lot of times in the film that they're not zombies. No, they're mostly uh, Chinese ones. I think. Yeah, it's the so cursed myself. ones that get infested by evil spirits and are hard to kill unless you decapitate them. Yeah, technically, they are, but they're not the zombies that we all know. And yeah, it's love. David. Johnny is the weird one. Christian is the guy who gets his head chopped off and it gets used as a... <laughs> <laughs> it gets used as a, as, a, hamlet. As, a, as a hamlet thing as a puppet Melody is the vegan specified in the film that she is a vegan um, but she's the, she's the final girl as well for the film so because <laughs> she's also a virgin you know how those things obviously go. yes because you got a boyfriend no I don't have a boyfriend I'm actually a virgin um, so they um, incur the wrath of the local sheriff Played by fucking, I forgot his name. Fuck. 
by the guy, the dad from Supernatural. Oh, shit, what's his name? Uh, uh, Jeffrey D. Morgan. Yeah. The guy, the dad from Supernatural, the uh, the dad, the, Thomas Wayne from the from Batman v uh, Superman. Yeah, you forgot Eric Paladino is the guy that plays. Yes, uh... the comedian from Watchmen. Yeah, it's it's fucking Jeffrey e. Morgan doing a fucking Southern accent, having the time of his life in this film. I fucking love him in this film. He was great, but so obviously they get held up at the. Um, at the town now because they're not allowed to leave because they're suspects in a murder. <laughs> An autopsy happens to David Carradine. He gets buried, and um, our characters obviously go on a little research party. To uh... there's a really funny gag with a bike, where oh, David yeah. David tries to goes I know how to ride a bike. It gets on it, and the bike just goes from under him and just carries on <laughs> driving down the road. It chases after. It's fucking great. Um, so obviously they start doing their little research. They meet the weird librarian record keeper lady who was very uptight about how uh, she's very uptight about cleanliness and evenness and she's always ready which is shown off, shot off later because we think she gets killed but she does not which I, was a good reveal but then Johnny gets possessed by this box that was in David Carradine's room and there's there's also this drifter guy in the in the story somewhere who has a cigarette in his mouth but doesn't light them. I don't know why. He's also in the prison, but then he's uh, then he escapes the prison. And uh, we come to a point now where David and two of the other girls go to this uh, little um, hoedown in in the town and in, in the in the bar just to you know cool off some steam. After which Johnny shows up with the box, starts possessing people left and right, and a big massacre starts. And that's a really good scene. That whole bar fight where it just comes out of nowhere and all the ma- the movie's kind of self aware, but it's also kind of not, which is a good thing because a lot of some of the characters are fully aware that are that they're in a really shitty horror film, <laughs> while others are like, "I'll oh, give me a break," which is good. And there's a lot of little nods and references to other films that clearly the director had fun doing. There's like a Texas Chainsaw Massacre reference. There's a, there's an Evil Dead poster in the room in one in the hotel. The the RV is a straight up reference to another film that I completely forget. I think it's uh, the RV looks like the one from The Hills Have Eyes. There's a lot of like little nods and shit like that. But also the practical effects of this film. Fucking man. They're really yeah like. Clearly, it's not a very high budget, but there's some really good, like, decapitations, and there's a shitload of blood. There is so much blood in this film, it's fucking ridiculous. But yeah, then uh, the the fight starts in the thing, in the bar. uh, I forgot his name already. Christian gets decapitated, and after that, Johnny walks around with him, using him as a puppet, and he has little conversations with him while he just shouts at him to shut up. And everybody in that bar gets possessed, including the band, which is the the the, the gas attendant man who also tells the story of the film. Uh, what else can I say? Then the reveal happens that the drifter knew everything all along, and we never never get an explanation of who this person is, or where they came from, or how or how they know how to stop the curse. He was just there. He just he just knew things, and uh, oh. Let me just stop you. Apparently, a week ago there was, a, you know, we have the Doom Eternal release date Ooh. and, and the C plans. And most importantly, they're trying to make Doom sixty four free. Because you know, that's a good thing. That's you know, because that shit's already free. You fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's fucking super for them to go and charge people for something you can get right now for free and just taste that for fucking hour. Yep. But yeah, the the movie is very self, very fun, very self aware. A lot of a lot of dumb, goofy gags that actually work. There's a lot of films that tried to do gags like that and they never work. While this one kind of does, it kind of slows down near the end, which kind of annoyed me. But it speeds back up straight away. Let's be fair. The musical number between the line dancing fucking uh, zombies <laughs> is the best thing in existence. That killed me. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> There's a, all the bands gathered on top of the RV because they're in front of the hotel and they've boarded the windows up and shit. And all of a sudden they start like they just pull a dance number, and they're doing fucking thriller, but it's a bit weirder looking. 
And all the guys inside the house were going, hey, what are they doing? What the fuck are they doing? They're dancing. What? Yeah, they're just dancing. <laughs> it just comes out of nowhere, but the movie's aware that it's happening. Which, and then we have a rap. Like the, 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 <laughs> the guy does a rap. And oh, yeah. It's a good rap. It's not a bad rap for for a countryman. The the the, the countryman does a re, does a rap, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a fun fun film. The end scene with all the with the chainsaw and shit like the the, the final girl when she's left in the uh, well one of the final girls that's left in the uh, when she's left in the house on her own like defends the whole house and does like a quadruple shotgun made out of pipes. That, that was stupid, but it was good. Uh, before that, the uh, other group of people get saved by the lady from from the you know the record keeper, and she's like, "What's going on in this town?" And the drifter goes, "You wouldn't believe me if I told you." And she's like, "Honestly, honey, at this point," and she's like putting that southern accent on hard, like she's clearly not. Uh, if she's southern, I don't know, but she it it sounds like over t- overkill. But she's like, "If at this point you told me that an evil Chinese." Uh, spirit came back from the dead to like possess the whole town i probably believe you and then the music cuts and we cut heart pan to like <laughs> the two characters looking at her like what He's like T- just tell me how to stop it we know how to stop it we have this bone because we dug up david carradine's corpse and we took his bones <laughs> and she's like all right go stop him then take these goons so uh, they go and fight Johnny at the end with a crossbow and shit like that. And the, she, the vegan girl kills him and he goes, I thought you were vegan. And then she like shoves a bone through his corpse and the drifter does a thing and the movie sort of ends and they put, the, you know, they seal him in the box. Um, also, one of my favorite things in the whole film, there's a lady with a, with a hatchet in her head and a lot of foam coming out of her mouth. Mm-hmm. That is literally how she is listed in the credits. I know. Is lady with a hatchet in their head and foam coming out of her mouth. <laughs> that, that she doesn't have a name. That's that's a credit list. Well, well, probably because she decided to not have one. Yeah, it's, that was funny. It was, it was re- really, really. It's a lot of little nods and shit like that. Like again, it's self-aware, but not to the point where it's annoying. Not to Deadpool levels. Where, yeah. you, where that's it, a good where it gets obnoxious. Yeah. It's a good movie. I like, actually really like. Yeah, it's fucking stupid. You go watch a stupid film. Again, it's not the most like it's not perfect or it's not the most amazing. But for if you want to kill eighty eight minutes and you want to like have a good time watching some dumb gory fun, it's it's good for that. It's a good film. I recommend it. it comes recommended. There was a couple of times where I snickered and my dad had to come over and look at what I was watching and he saw the blood and he was like, "Huh." Eh? And then he walked well, away. My mom tried to watch exactly two minutes of it, and she said, "This is too, this is too disgusting." And she walked away as well. But it's not okay. It is kind of it's pretty disgusting place. to be fair. In places, the bit where he's got the fucking chainsaw stuck in his neck, and he's like walking around, there's blood gushing everywhere. It's pretty gruesome. Yeah. Even though the chainsaw is clearly not moving, and he's ju- he's just fidgeting on his own. But <laughs> it's the B movie charm. Like, but my, my mom's the type of person that when we watched what was the anthology film Leslie Nielsen uh, Creep Show yeah we watched one. we watched Creep Show and I posted on my Facebook story about when he snaps in the first scene where he snaps the neck and he fucking twists her like a full 180 my mom apparently saw that and she was she, and she came up to me and she said that was very scary you shouldn't have posted that <laughs> <laughs> and it's the gooviest looking thing in the world um but yeah, go watch go watch Dead and Breakfast. Also, don't look at the links that Evo sends you. Click on the bottom link because when he sends you that link, he sends you the link to the fucking uh, Night of not Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, the Zack Snyder one. Yeah, no, no. So I did not. Good. At first, I was like, Yeah, this? also because I've seen because I've seen the movie before. I was like, I don't know this part. Maybe it's like five minutes in, then then the little zombie girl shows up. I'm like, This is Dawn of the Dead. <laughs> this is Zack no, Snyder's best like, film. I was like, no, that movie, that movie is fucking garbage. Come on. It's still his best film, which is saying something. Uh, no, I was like, I was uh, going for the movie. I was like, wait, this is not the movie. I 
why is it here? What the fuck is this? Why is it so crisp and clean? Wait a second. What's going on? Oh shit! It's Dawn of the where Dead. Is the, where is uh, David Carradine? I was I was uh, so baffled because I expected some schlocky shit, and then it's like not, you know nice looking opening scenes, and I'm like, wait, I've watched this before. And then obviously, yeah, the zombie girl, and I'm like, oh, it's Dawn of the Dead. Why is he sent me Dawn of the Dead? And then I look down, and on the same page that you sent me, there's a little thing at the bottom that says links. You click on links, and then it send, sends you over to, to David Carradine being hammy. Ooh, that was Speaking that's a, like this. That was such a weird thing, because that shouldn't happen. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It was, uh, I, was, I was very confused. But at the end of the day, I watched the film, and I had a it's good time. Sad. It is a good movie, yeah. Yes. Have you got anything to add to the movie? Well, no. I mean, like I said, this is a for character to it. Yeah. People who made the movie had at least fun while making it. You can tell they're having a shitload of fun, yeah. Could be worse. It's nice to see a movie where people have fun and nobody's actually suffering. Or nobody, mm. or people actually want to be on set, which you can clearly tell with this one, which is a good thing. So shall I give you a film for next week? Sure. Which movie? I'll give you a movie that actually spends... The first half is literally all character development, which makes you really care about the characters by the end of the film. If you ever... I already forgot the director's name. Fucking shit. Uh, have you ever heard of Gaspar Noé? Sounds familiar. He's an Argentine director, the guy that made Irreversible. Yeah. You are watching a movie called Climax. I think I know it. Let me just double check. Climax by the same director. Because, of course, this is all going to reach a climax. <laughs> oh, no, honestly, it's it's one of those films that you feel like you need a shower by the end, but it's you, you just can't look away. It's really well made. Cinematography as well. Cinematography-wise, there's so, mu- so many th- little things about this film that are just incredible. Uh, you said Climax... 2018 yeah no it's Sofia Butella yes a lot of it's, it's oh I know no, I know yeah I know this movie yeah the whole movie's made to be look like it's one shot but clearly there's trickery involved but there is a lot of like super long takes of just I conversations and dance moves and very a lot of cool dancing in it as well so it's a good film I had a great time I didn't have a great time at all actually I had a terrible time watching it but it's one of those films that you just need to watch to appreciate. Just watch it once, though. Don't watch it more than once. Uh, oh, I, I, I know the movie. It's a good film. So, talk about. We shall talk about climax. One of the simpler stories, but there's a lot, to, a lot to like pull out of that film. Okay. I was make it gonna make a pull out joke, but I'm not gonna. So yeah, next week we should be back on normal schedule. I am back in the UK from Wednesday and I'm off Thursday, so we can record Thursday night if you want. Yeah, sure. Sounds Gucci to me. Gucci to me. So yeah, Christo Botev for Wolverine 2020. Make it happen, guys. Make, Make it, it happen. Please. <laughs> Make it. Dig him up. Anyway, have you got anything to say, good sir? No, have a, have a good night. Have a good day. Have Enjoy a the rest good of the day. Week. Good night. Yes, have a good week, friends and people who listen. Uh, thank. This has been episode fifty, by the way. Well, which one? Fifty. This episode five. Oh, episode fifty. Ah, fitting that we do a fucking David Carradine movie. <laughs> yeah, for once. Yeah, for once. I'm, 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 I'm fucking amazed. So so such a long time spent. We still haven't had a David Carradine movie. Yes. So much time talking about schlock, and we never got to this. So we finally got to it. Rest in peace, David Karadin, for especially since you gave us so many hours of pure enjoyment. Yes, thank you for being or well, being you, being you. Yeah, thank you, well, thank you for being a friend, being yourself, yeah. and being an amazing person. Thank you. Yeah, this has been episode fifty of the Voice from Behind podcast. I have been Evo, and with you was the guy that's who's gonna spend the whole night playing Heroes of Might and Magic Three because he's a fucking low life. It could be worse. I'm I'm probably gonna go to bed. But <laughs> that's a different story. All right. We shall disappear into the night or in the day or whatever time we want listening to this. Dis- disappear into my asshole. Wait, uh, what? We, what? I didn't bring the loop. I told you not to tell people. Sorry. 
Bite the, so pi- bite the pillow, I'm going in dry. Anyway, thank you all for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for screaming and watch- shout get the- and let it all out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for looking up the hashtag Voices from Behind. And we will see you all next week on the Voices from Behind podcast. I'm going to play us a little music. Here it is. And goodbye now.